That's money. Man. What's going on? I want to talk to you a little bit about overtraining today. I know, I know, I know. I love C.T. Fletcher too. I love his passion. I love his enthusiasm. I love his grit. But I think there is a state of overtraining. You basically need stress to get stronger, to progress, all right? So there's going to be a minimum amount of left, left or a minimal amount of effort required and intensity required to get in that sweet spot where you're actually going to progress. But I also believe there's a maximum, all right? So you need to live in the sweet spot. Sweet spot's going to be a little bit different for every person. If you haven't worked out for 20 years, you're probably not going to need to train like rich frowning to get to where you want to go, all right? You want to progress a little bit week by week, month by month, and build up. Live in the sweet spot, all right? All right, guys, with overtraining, a lot has to come with the endocrine system that affects and gets you into these, uh, these processes, get all messed up in your body. But overtraining is a real thing. You'll see it. You will get weaker at some point. You could die. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> well, but uh, you could possibly get injured, which no one wants to get that, because the best way to get in the best shape of your life, to get the strongest you can, is to just keep building, keep building, keep building, all right? There's four telltale, telltale signs you're passing the maximum amount of exercise needed to progress, all right? We'll get into those in a second. Sweet analogy I looked at the other day, all right? For some reason, everybody in America loves this concept of more is better, more is better, more is better, more is better. But if you had a headache, would you take a whole bottle of Tylenol? No, because that would be stupid, all right? I'm not overtraining. Four telltale signs you could be overtraining. Number one, your aches and pains start, start adding up and looking like a receipt to a grocery store, right? So you have elbow tendonitis, and then all of a sudden you have a huge knot coming in your trap that you can't turn your head to the side. The knee you blasted 12 years ago in a car accident and hasn't hurt for the last seven all of a sudden starts acting up, and your thumb starts hurting because you're swiping right on whatever apps you guys are on so much, all right? This could be a telltale sign that you're going into a state of overtraining. Number two, Every single workout is turning into trash. Days turning into weeks. I mean, you just are not doing well in the gym. I understand a lot of things happen. You're not gonna feel like Rocky Balboa every day, right? But if you're constantly having trash workouts, could be a good sign you're overtraining. Number three. So, your elevated heart rate's up. Your immune system just isn't functioning well. You've been sick twice in the last four weeks. Not a good sign. You're looking up on WebMD what the clinical definition of insomnia is, all right? Your libido is completely gone. Your hormones in array. Number four, this is the big one, all right? Strength coaches, this is what we monitor. This is what we rock with. We're looking at grip strength as well as power production or explosiveness. Why? Great indicators of how your central nervous system is functioning. If you're in a state of overtraining, your central nervous system function is going to... All right, Martin Rooney um, helped build Parisi Speed School and now he's running training for Warriors. Trains a lot of UFC fighters. His methodology is to look at their vertical leap through the weeks or each month to see if there's a drop off in it. That's gonna be basically correlate to a diminished performance, diminished central nervous system function and how these athletes are doing with the or prescribed training program. All right. It doesn't have to be vertical leap though. You can look at broad jump, you can look at throws to measure, just so you have a variable that's gonna dictate power output that you know you can check as you're going through, all right? If you have some money to throw around, you can also look at, there's a lot of devices out there that right now that are measuring bar speed, so you can look at a bar speed at a specific percentage on an Olympic lift. If you're having a diminished on bar speed, also a great indicator your central nervous system isn't you know, firing at max capacity. If you're super broken and gutter like me, what are you gonna do? As long as you're sustaining, you know, uh, maintaining your body weight, you can look at bar hangs, chin up hangs, pull up hangs, stuff of that nature. You can load a specific amount on a bar, see how long you're holding, all right? Things like that. If you have a tensiometer, that would be great to look at grip strength, but you know, there, there's ways to do this, all right? So start paying attention to these variables going forward. There is such a thing as overtraining. You can monitor variables to make sure you're not in a state of overtraining, especially if you got a card coming up or you got a specific event you're training for coming up, all right? So let's get after this thing. Program wisely. Let's keep getting these people better. Game time, baby. Let's do it.
she's like a bat she was in for Olympian. She has a vision for <laughs> two, I think. Battle mode.